Have you ever thought about how massive platforms like Netflix or Amazon keep running smoothly, even when things start to go wrong? The secret lies in something called as resilience. Simply put, resilience is the ability of a system to bounce back from failures and continue operating even under pressure. In a microservices architecture, where you have dozens or even hundreds of services working together, ensuring resilience isn't just a good to have, it's critical. When one service fails, it would cause a cascading failure that could bring the entire system down. But with right resilience patterns in place, we can keep our systems running smoothly even when the unexpected happens. Today, we are going to break down the top resilience patterns that can help safeguard our microservices. And by the way, if you are interested in deep dive on any specific pattern like the circuit breaker pattern or the retry pattern, I've got separate videos covering those topics in detail. Microservices are great for scalability and flexibility, but they come with their own set of challenges. Picture this, you are running a set of services and one of them, say your payment service, goes down. Suddenly, your order service, which depends on it, starts failing too. And before you know it, everything spirals out of control, leaving your users frustrated and your systems in chaos. This is a cascading failure, one of the most dangerous issues in microservices. And to prevent this, we need to use resilience patterns that help us contain failures and keep our system operational. First up is the circuit breaker pattern. This is one of the most commonly used patterns in microservices to protect against repeated failures. If a service keeps failing, the circuit breaker trips temporarily stopping further calls to that service until it recovers. For example, let's say your payment service is down. Instead of constantly trying and failing to process payments, the circuit breaker kicks in and stops further attempts. After a brief pause, the system checks if the service has recovered. If it is still down, the circuit breaker remains active, preventing unnecessary strain on your system. Remember, I have already made a detailed video on the circuit breaker pattern with examples, so be sure to check that out for a deeper dive. Next up is the retry pattern. Not all failures are prominent. Sometimes they are caused by a temporary issue like network latency. The retry pattern automatically retries a failed request after a short delay. But here is the trick. Instead of retrying immediately and overwhelming the service, we use something called as exponential backoff, which means waiting longer between each retry. For example, if your inventory service fails due to a brief network issue, the retry mechanism will kick in. It will wait a little longer after each failure before trying again, giving the system time to recover without adding more pressure. Now, sometimes retries and circuit breakers aren't enough. That's where the fallback pattern comes in. Instead of failing entirely, the pattern provides an alternative response when a service is unavailable. For example, imagine your recommendation service is down. Instead of showing an error message to users, you can display cache recommendations or a default list. Now, it might not be as good as real-time recommendations, but it keeps the user experience intact while the system stabilizes. Let's talk about bulkheads. Think of a ship with watertight compartments or bulkheads. If one section floods, the bulkhead prevents the water from spreading to other parts of the ship. The bulkhead pattern works the same way in microservices, by isolating services so that if one fails, it doesn't drag down others. For example, you can isolate your user service from your payment service. So if the payment service fails, users can still log in and browse products. This ensures critical part of your system stay operational, even when other services are struggling. Now, you use the circuit breaker pattern when a service itself is failing repeatedly and you want to avoid overwhelming it with more requests. And you can use the bulkhead pattern when you want to protect critical services from being impacted by failures or overconsumption of resources by less critical services. Together, they work well to build robust, resilient microservices. For example, you could apply circuit breakers to each service to stop repeated calls to failing services and use bulkheads to make sure that the failure of a non-essential service doesn't affect the critical parts of your system. Now, let's talk about the timeout pattern. Without proper timeouts, your system could end up waiting indefinitely for a response that's never coming. By setting a timeout, you ensure that if a service doesn't respond within a certain time, the request is abandoned and your system remains responsive. For example, if your authentication service is taking too long to respond, the system will cancel the request after a few seconds and either retry or fall back to another solution. This prevents users from waiting forever and keeps your system snappy. Implementing resilience isn't just about patterns. It's about having the right tools and processes in place. 
monitoring, logging and tracing are key to understanding how your services are performing. Tools like Prometheus for monitoring and Jager for distributed tracing can help you detect and diagnose issues early. And one more thing, consider using Chaos Engineering to test your system's resilience. Tools like Chaos Monkey developed by Netflix intentionally inject failures into your system to see how it responds. This way, you are not just waiting for something to go wrong, you are actively preparing for it. Speaking of Netflix, they are one of the best examples of resiliency in action. With millions of users streaming content at the same time, Netflix can't afford downtime. They have implemented multiple resilience patterns from circuit breakers to bulkheads and even pioneered the concept of chaos engineering with their tool Chaos Monkey. It randomly disables services in production to ensure that failures don't disrupt their entire system. The result? Netflix can handle service failures without users even noticing, ensuring continuous streaming even when parts of their systems go down. And if you are wondering how to implement these resilience patterns, there are some great tools to help you out. Resilience4j is a lightweight library that supports most of the patterns we have discussed today, like circuit breakers and retries. Another popular option is Hysteris, which was developed by Netflix and focuses on managing latency and fault tolerance in distributed systems. To wrap things up, resilience patterns are essential for keeping your microservices running smoothly, even when things go wrong. Whether it is using circuit breakers to prevent cascading failures, or using fallbacks to provide alternative responses, these patterns ensure your systems remains robust and reliable. So if you are using any of these patterns in your projects, I'd love to hear about it. What's your favorite resilience pattern? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to check out my other videos.